And I'll move to the uh, last item, which was Pavel's um, caching support for column unit. Okay, perhaps I can share my screen because I do have the time demo. Let me know if you see my uh, internet browser. So yeah, I can start with a personal opinion that Spark and Open Linux integration is just amazing. And uh, uh, it's because it has a solid foundations uh, behind that were created before I joined the project. Uh, it's because we are able to extract lineage from a logical plan, which is a direct representation of what Spark is going to do uh, when processing data. And this allows us to yeah, extract everything we need and create great open lineage events based on that and detect all the outputs, all the inputs, and somehow try to find out the relations between the inputs and the outputs. So we are just in the middle of the engine that is processing data, and we are able to extract uh, the information we need. Uh, the other great thing about it is that it's just, I don't know if you see that I'm selecting the lines, it's just four lines of configuration that uh, you need to do to turn on the uh, open lineage collection for Spark jobs. Uh, these are like include the open lineage jar. Let's send the events to the backend, and uh, that's all. And let's declare, declare extra listener. And so, even if so, if you are an ops guy or your organization uses Airflow to trigger Spark jobs, uh, you can do it once in your Spark operator or as an environment parameters, and the open lineage should be collected. So within a demo, I do have an empty uh, Marquez instance running locally with no data sets. And yeah, the beauty of this is we get data from the logical plans. And, uh, and this beauty actually leads to some problems. And the problem we are going to discuss today is cached data sets. So caching is a pretty popular concept uh, for Spark jobs. Imagine that... Uh, some computation gets repeated 50 times over a single job and we don't want to repeat it. We want to cache its results in memory or store it in local in disk within the uh, Spark context. And that, that, that's how that's why the caching was invented. And the problem here is uh, when caching a data set, we do have a separate logical plan that is used to compute this data set. And which means that when we later use the cache data set, we do have like two logical plans that are used to generate single single output uh, from the same input. And when evaluating a lineage, we need to somehow merge those two logical plans to extract information from uh, both of them. And this is uh, uh, what happened within the PR we're demoing today. Uh, so in the context of column level lineage, we're able to merge those two logical plans so that even when we cache a data set, we know uh, how the inputs are affecting the output. So uh, in this demo, we have uh, we are creating a simple data frame of like two columns, call one and call two, and write it as a table, let's call it data set A. Uh, yes, and then we create a cached data set. Uh, we know that it's cached because we use uh, cache action uh, that keeps the data set in memory and allows us to be reused later on. Uh, so whenever we reuse the data, this data set, we are not computing it over and over again. It's somewhere stored in the memory. And based on this data set, we can uh, create a data set B where we simply add those call one and call two. Uh, yes, and uh, after that, we can go to Marquez and see if our data got collected uh yes we do have some commands and the input is data set a then it, the output is data set b uh and then we do have a column lineage section tab which allows us to see that for call four we do have two input fields pointing to call one and call two of the input data set a so uh it's not a huge demo and it's uh not uh, perhaps super interesting, uh, but uh, yeah, there was kind of a gap 
because caching data is, is extremely popular when writing Spark application. And when we missed the column level lineage here, uh, it was a huge gap that we filled within this PR. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So the um, any question on Pavel's little demo? I'm I'm just curious, Pavel. Were, were there any problems with assigning job names or namespaces in um, merging the logical plans, or uh, if I understood your presentation? Yeah, so we always get the job name of this uh, second logical plan. Uh, we just merge the first one with skipping its name, and 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 the namespace is global for the whole Spark notebook and the Spark job. That makes sense. Thank you. Uh, 